Hello, you're welcome to Online Healing Crusade. Praise the Lord. It's so good to have you again. Uh, we believe the Lord has brought you. And if you are joining us for the first time, this is Online Healing Crusade and it takes place every day, 6 p.m. GMT plus one. So tomorrow we'll be expecting you and God has told his servant to preach the gospel, the total gospel, uh, saving your soul, your health, you know, your body, your spirit, soul and body, total gospel with the power of God. And I believe the Holy Ghost is there with you. If you are watching right now, or probably you are listening later through YouTube, uh, the power of God is there to affect the word that you are about to hear and believe and receive in the name of Jesus. I do believe God is going to do something great in your life tonight again. Join me to welcome the servants of the Lord, Evangelist Louis Udufemi Ogunari, as he brings the word of the Lord to us again tonight. From the throne of grace. God bless you and stay connected. Praise the Lord. Thank God for another opportunity to bring you the word of life today. Amen. Father, bring the breath of life on your word as we get into it today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Um, yesterday, I started ministering on something very important, and that is um, giving us reasons to believe God for long life you understand long life okay so that uh, on no account are you going to die before your time that's my prayer for you you will not die before your time all right and um, <clears throat> i'll take one of the scriptures i have read yesterday and then i'll elaborate on it today matthew chapter 16 verse 28 verily i say unto you there will be some standing here which shall not taste of death Till they see the Son of Man coming in his kingdom. Jesus said that. Those, that's red letter, right? And that means that uh, once, once Jesus has spoken something, it's an infallible thing. It's not just an idea of somebody. It's one of the basic truths that God wanted to have. And I read to you yesterday, uh, Revelation chapter 21, that uh, we overcome by the blood of the Lamb. And uh, chapter 12, for that. Revelation chapter 12, verse uh, 10 and 11. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now is come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. And they overcome him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they love not their life to death. One of the powerful things that we use against the devil to be able to have victory and to become an overcomer is that you must know the power in the blood of Jesus because the blood of Jesus will give you victory over the devil. You need to have also a powerful understanding of words of testimony. You must have areas that you can testify that God has answered your prayer before and what increases your faith to make you believe is going to answer you another time. And then number three, you need to have a knowledge of victory over death that you are not afraid of death. You're not scared. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because once the devil knows that you have fear, of death is going to keep bringing that against you, all right? And um, one of the things that demystify any any demonic stronghold in the life of people is knowledge. It says my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So we always need knowledge to be able to overcome the devil. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when we get to a junction like this, which is the junction of truth, everybody should get ready and be a student so you can learn from the things of God. So uh, it's not that the devil is strong or stronger than he used to be, but if people are not knowledgeable, they are ignorant, the devil is going to take advantage of their ignorance. You understand me? So that's why knowledge is very important. Uh, Brother Paul will always say that I will not have you ignorant, brethren. So concerning spiritual things, I will have you ignorant. So he wants to supply knowledge of this time because we need to understand it. He prayed for the church in a place that the eyes of our understanding may be enlightened, that we may know. What we need to know because once you have correct knowledge the devil can't cheat you you understand me so uh now i'm talking about power over death so let's analyze this word more deeply today so if jesus christ said there will be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the son of man coming in his kingdom uh in mark chapter 9 verse 1 he said and he said unto them verily i say unto you that there will be some of them that stand here, which shall not taste of death, till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. They will see the kingdom of God come with power. All right. So now I want to dig deeper into this today. What does it mean to taste 
He said, we will not taste death. What does it mean to taste? To serve, to sense the flavor of something that you are eating or you are drinking. So to taste it is to just sense the flavor. So it means, if I'm applying that to the scripture we have read, when it says we shall not taste that, it means you shall not sense the flavor of death. Can somebody say amen to that? Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You won't even have any, any tinge of death, okay? Uh, to put a small amount of something, either of food or drink, on your mouth, in order to find out what the flavor is or the taste is. A small amount of it. Now, this is the way I interpret it in the light of the scripture that we just read now, because it says you shall not taste death. Some shall not taste that. So it means some shall not have a small amount of death in their life. Not even a small portion of death. You won't have it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Somebody will say, Matter that. I you getting that? Say, I will not taste that. I won't smell the way death is. I won't have a sense of the flavor of death. And I will not even have a small amount of it. Okay? Because sickness is a small amount of death, you know. <laughs> Infirmity. Some people, when they are so sick, they wish they die. They prefer death to even all this suffering. Because they think that one will come once, bam, and then the death, we don't know what happened. But with that, we know what happened. It's better for you to be healed than for you to die. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Okay? Now, another meaning of the word taste is to become acquainted with something by experience. They say somebody has tasted the frustration of defeat before because he has been defeated once. So they say that person has tasted the frustration of defeat. So to become acquainted with something by experience. So how do we now bring that to the light of the scripture we just read? That I shall not taste death. And God says some will be among us who will not taste death till they come. So it means we shall not be acquainted with death. We will not even have experience of death. Hey. So Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay, it says we shall not... Um, we shall not experience that even in a little way. We won't experience it at all. We shall not have even small quantity of death. You won't have that. We shall not perceive or recognize the feel of death. Are you getting what I'm saying? You will not recognize or have any feeling of death. That's not going to be your portion. Okay? To touch, to test. So you will not touch death, or death will not touch you. You will not taste death, you will not test death, and death will not test you. Yeah, yeah. Death will not touch us in any way. We shall not be touched of death in our life. These are very profound statements. Okay? To taste means to endure. So you will not endure death or any little ounce of death and whatever death means in the realm of the spirit. You will not feel that. You will not have that. You will not love that. You will not know that. You will not pass through that. You will not suffer that. You will not sustain that. You will not experience that. You will not undergo that. You will not witness that. You will have no sample of death in your life. Those are very powerful statements, you know. And that's, and that's just talking about that same word that says that some among us will not even taste of death. So the more you know, the better your experience in life. That's why we need to all know. Look, look at this scripture. Luke chapter 19 verse 13. Luke 19 13 says, Occupy till I come. He said so. This means to us that God had given jobs, all of us that God has given jobs to do, assignments to accomplish, projects to accomplish, we should just get busy doing what he has asked us to do. We do not have time to die. We have no time for death. Death is not in the program for us. He said, occupy till I come. He didn't even say, occupy till you die. He said, occupy till I come. So if I say, hold this thing till I come, that means it's going to be in your hand until you see me. Are you getting what I'm saying? If I say, hold this thing till midnight, then you keep holding it until midnight. When you are getting to midnight, you know it's the time to hold it as a last. But if you say, oh, hold this thing till I come, then midnight is not the time to go. It's to wait till whenever it comes. 
So we say occupy till I come. John 6, 63 says, The word that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Okay? So God's word is God's spirit. God's word is God's life. So if I want more of his life, I take more of his word. Are you getting what I'm saying? Mark chapter 9 verse 1 said, Till they see the kingdom of God come with power. The one I read to you the other time, I think Mark 9.16. Isn't it? Let me check. It's Mark 9.1. Okay. It says, And he said unto them, Very dear, I say unto you that there be some of them that, shall, that stand here which shall not taste of death till they have seen the kingdom of God come with power. So till the church is operating in awesome power, Jesus is not coming. Are you hearing what I'm saying? First Corinthians 16 verse 8 says, uh, You tarry at Ephesus until Pentecost. So tarry means you keep staying there till Pentecost come. But what he told us is we occupy till he himself come, not till when Pentecost come. Are you getting it? All right? So it means to stay on duty till the church is manifesting the awesome power of God that disciples are overthrows and overturn the operation of the devil on earth. So we should all be reigning and ruling uh, alongside with Jesus Christ our Savior and with the Holy Ghost power in us. Okay? Ezekiel 21 verse 27. Ezekiel 21 27 said, I will overturn and overturn and overturn, and it shall be no more until he come whose right it is, and I will give it to him. So it means many things we keep turning over and over and over in the world, but it doesn't mean that we should turn with it. Whatever is turning in the world does not affect us. We should just keep on forging forward, doing the assignment that God has given us to do, not planning about that. You understand what I'm saying? No arranging for that. Okay? Job chapter 34, verse 25. He said, He that overturned them in the night, so that they are destroyed. May you not be overturned in the night for destruction in Jesus' name. Job 28, verse 9. He said, He put forth his hand upon the rock. He overturned the mountain by their roots. So, God is able to overturn what looks mountainous, difficult, impossible to pass, even from their roots. Judges chapter 7, verse 13. Said God, who overturned the camp of the enemy by a cake of barley. That one said he saw a dream. They said they saw a dream when God wanted to destroy them using <laughs> Gideon and his people or whatever. I said they saw a dream. That uh, a little cake just rolled into the camp, and before you know it, it starts overrunning everything in this there. Okay? So, we are the ones to overrun the world. The world is not to overrun us. We are the little hand of God that is going to overcome the enemy. Are you getting what I'm saying? Uh, Daniel chapter 3, verse 27 says, The princes, the governors, and the captains, and the kings of counselors, being gathered together, they saw this man upon whose bodies the fire. That is, death had no power, nor was an heir of their head singed, neither was their coat changed, nor the smell of death had passed on them, or the smell of fire. So they were put inside fire. Fire did not burn them, fire did not kill them, and the smell of fire was not even felt on them. So I can walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You won't, when I get up, you won't feel the smell of death in my body. I won't smell like somebody who just had an encounter with death. No, I'm coming with life. Light passes through darkness, and darkness can't hold light. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says that, you know, the life of God that is in us. Say, um, let me look at it in the book of John. In him was the light, and the light was the light of men. And the light channeled the darkness, and darkness cannot comprehend it. Are you getting what I'm saying? Darkness can't handle light. Light is too much for darkness. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying? 
May God grant you understanding. These things look like I'm just saying some simple statements, but they are not just simple statements. They are powerful statements in the realm of the Spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? And uh, when you have these things, they, 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 they surely put, yeah, uh, John chapter 1 verse 4 says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and darkness comprehended it not. Darkness cannot handle light. We are children of light. Are you getting what I'm saying? Supernatural things of God are true. They are yea and amen and they are settled in heaven forever. Never you think that the devil can run you over. No, you are the one that the devil should be afraid of because he can't handle you. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay? So the supernatural power of God in our life should give us that confidence over the devil. Hallelujah. Mm. <laughs> verse 4 John chapter 1 verse 4 reading from TPT that's the passion so life came into being because of him for his life is light for all humanity and the living expression is the light that burst through the gloom the light that darkness could not diminish okay Darkness could not diminish this light, nor could it comprehend it. The darkness can also be a metaphor for the sons of darkness. That means anybody who is under the spirit of darkness or the lord of darkness with them, they can't handle us that are in the light. Are you getting what I'm saying? So we are children of light. As long as we walk in the light, the light of God will keep radiating over our life. We live in the checking of glory of God. The devil can't handle us. We are too much for him. But we must have this. See, one of the things that devil used to harass people, you know, is the, is the spirit of death. Say, so if you do this, we're going to kill you. If you do this other, we will kill you. If you dare to do this, we will kill you. As if they are the one that has the power of life and death. The power of life and death is not in the hand of the devil. It's the hand of Jesus. He said, I have. Tell John, go tell my people that I have the keys now. Of both hell and heaven and hell everywhere. Are you getting what I'm saying? So don't let anybody cheat us by making us to fear and be scared. By whatever anybody is doing. That's nothing anyone is doing anywhere. The key is not in the hand of the devil anymore. Look at Revelation chapter 1. Uh, John, the beloved, is talking here from verse 17 and 18. He said, And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as dead. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not, I am, I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. If, amen, and I have the keys of hell and of death. Mm. The keys of what? Of hell and of death. Jesus is talking now. This is red letter. So it means that authority of life and death is not in the hand of the devil anymore. We are the one people should be afraid of that. And don't let that man cost you. If he costs you, you can die. But people are afraid of juju people that have evil spirit power because they don't know the gravity and the enormity of the kind of power we carry. Because the power is an, in an eating vessel, <laughs> we, look, we look feeble because we are human beings like you. But what we carry makes us not to just be an ordinary human being. We are supernatural beings. We are divinity living in the midst of humanity. Are you getting We are divinity a, a personified but working as if we are mere men. But we are not mere men. We are not ordinary men. We are supernatural. And then when we understand that and we operate in that realm, death can't handle us. The zoe, the life of God in me, is not a life that can be extinguished by death or darkness or devil. The devil can't extinguish my life. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay? So we need to understand all this. Romans chapter 8 verse 2 says, For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. That's a law of sin and death that is operating in the world. And that law of sin and death is what made people believe that after a particular age, they get so weak that they can't function very well anymore. Because there is a law of diminishing return. There is a law of, as you get old, you have uh, inability to reason well, you have dementia, you have uh, all sorts of, they talk some demons that, uh, okay. medical demons and dragons. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible says, as you grow old, you get stronger. He didn't say as you get old, then you will not be able to talk, you will not be able to see, you will not be able to walk. That's not, that's not Bible. At 120, Moses was receiving an instruction. Come up here, come and meet me up here. And he went to Mount Nebo. Are you getting what I'm saying? Climbing mountains at 120. And his eyes was not dim. 
That means he was not using glasses at 120. And his force was not abated. That means he has not lost his strength at 120. He can see jog. He can see hop. He still has, you know, another translation says he has a spring you know, on, on his feet. That means when he's walking, he's, he's bouncing the way young men bounce when they are wearing sneakers. Are you getting what I'm saying? A man of 120 is still bouncing, not doing, not holding, walking stick at 120. You need the force of life inside your spirit, man. And that's what I'll be preaching for some time on this air. And I pray that God give you opportunity to be a part of it in Jesus' name. All right? I'll still pray for somebody today. Uh, shortly, as soon as I got here and I started ministering, I felt that somebody had an attack in their heart. Okay? It's, it's a painful thing. You're feeling it around your heart as if there's an arrow sent. Okay, whatever that arrow is, I send it back to sender in the name of Jesus. And by the reason of the anointing, the yoke is destroyed upon your life right now in the name of Jesus. The Bible says, strength forth his word and his word deliver them from all the oppression. You are delivered just by that revelation. Revelation brings redemption. The fact that God revealed it means he wants to help you. And once I have pronounced it, I'm declaring it, then the anointing goes into oppression. You are healed in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, I pray. Well, uh, I, I want to invite you. Today is uh, March 3rd, and um, next month, April 1st, all through to May 30th, 60 days of crusade will be having in Akure here. Are you getting what I'm saying? 60 days crusade, healing crusade for that matter. Are you getting it? We'll be having it on ground physically. And people will be present. So some of you that have been hearing us on air, and you wonder, how do we get these people? It's around Futa, Futa Southgate, okay? In Asure Ondo State, okay? Number four, Ejigo Street, behind the uh, Apatakiti uh, 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 Transformer, Ejigo, okay? Find your way to that place in Akure. Whatever sickness, disease, or infirmity have been on your body for a long time. And you've been hearing this kind of a program but you don't know how to get in contact with the reality of these things, okay? You wish you could get us. Some people ask, do you have a church? Where can we come and all that? I don't have a church. But God has given us a time assignment now that we should have what? 60 days crusade. Now I'm giving you an opportunity, man. Anywhere you are across the globe, if you have anybody that is sick, a friend with whatever kind of sickness, body sickness, mind sickness, soul sickness, whatever, spiritual, demonic, bring them all. The power of God will be present. The Bible says in Luke chapter 5, verse 17, it said that Jesus Christ was ministering and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. I like that. I'll read that to you before I close. Because that's, that's part of what we need to keep emphasizing on this platform. Luke chapter 5, verse uh, 17. And it came to pass on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee and of Judea and of Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was present to heal them. For those 60 days, my brother, I assure you, the power of the Lord will be present to heal people. So as people keep coming every day, they keep experiencing another newness of God's power every day. Fresh oil from the throne of God. So whatever the challenges you have, you bring them to his presence. And um, we still have like 27 or something days before we get to that day. But I like to keep reminding you so that you can get ready and get prepared. Maybe you have to travel from somewhere. Maybe you have to prepare. I don't know how you're going to make it. But I am sure when you get down here, the anointing of God that destroyed the yoke, very much available. And it's going to be of help to everyone. It's free. You don't have to pay. Get free. Free. <laughs> Get is free for everybody. You understand what I'm saying? Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the opportunity to bring your word today. And for all those who have had this word, may strength begin to rise inside of them, not to give up for that. And not to give themselves over to that in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Until tomorrow, be healthy, wealthy, and strong. God bless you.